Matt, let me turn to you. Are you up, Matt? Can I? Can you hear you? I uh, yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Terrific. Yes. Let me just turn to you. Maybe you can help explain this to everybody. Uh, I was talking to Jan about how his fund, the RSX, is still trading here in the United States, even though the underlying stocks themselves are not trading in Moscow. And explain to us how those valuations are determined, how you get an, an estimate on what the fair value of, of any ETF is when the underlying stocks aren't trading in, in their, their underlying country. Yeah, I mean, in some of the, the funds that are focused on Russian equities, they do own ADRs and GDRs, which are still traded in the secondary market. And therefore, because there's prices in the secondary market on those you know, ADRs and GDRs, that can filter back into the ETF to provide an, in, sort of a, a proxy value for what the basket of Russian securities could be. Overall, you know, what we're seeing is that you know, the, the ETF itself is serving as a secondary market price discovery tool where essentially risk can transfer. You know, it's between willing buyers and sellers that are trading the ETF and the, the market makers will, will price the ETF effectively on where they feel that that risk can be transferred. And they're going to be using a multitude of inputs, whether it's historical correlations to different marketplaces, or really what we're seeing now is just a dramatic haircut based on some of the, the lack of trading in the local markets and what we've seen in the, in the CDX market for Russian local bonds, yeah. but also from a currency perspective. So what I always say in these type of periods where you do have some dislocation is that the ETF will be serving as a, an efficient risk transfer tool and price discovery mechanism. Yeah, yeah. Jan, um, Matt gave us a very good little uh, explainer about what was going on there, about how the ETFs can still trade when the underlying stocks are closed. One thing that's very important here in determining prices is uh, some of the stocks, for example, in the RSX, do trade as ADRs in London, like Gazprom, for example, which is down dramatically. So there are ways of estimating, in, in the case of if you have an ADR trading somewhere else, where it can work. But what's remarkable to me, on is how well these ETFs work, even when you don't have an ADR trading in another country, how well they are, uh, they do at estimating what, what, the, uh, what the ultimate fair value of these stocks are. Yeah, I heard that point. That's absolutely correct. About 75% of RSX assets are um, either GDRs traded in London or ADRs traded here in the United States. So uh, the, the one point I would add as well to the conversation is that it's very hard to determine what the underlying value is uh, of, the, of the stocks, um, you know, when they're not trading. And even so, um, the ETF may trade at a premium or discount based on uh, traders' willingness to take risk on, because ultimately they do have to, uh, you know, exchange underlying shares into the ETF uh, uh, or not. And there are risks when, when the companies might get sanctioned or whether people in that delivery chain, including custodians, don't want to take custody. Yeah. You know, Todd, this is a, a great teaching moment. You and I were talking about this, about the power of ETFs. Th this happened before. The Greek stock market, we were talking about this this morning, was closed for weeks in, what, 2015? But the Greek ETFs here just kept trading without them. And it turns out that investors are pretty good at estimating the approximate price of stocks, even when they're not trading. And I think the Greek market was closed for six weeks. That's right. Uh, we, we saw that with GREK. That's the Greek ETF you were referencing. We saw this with the Irish Spring. That happened with the Egypt ETF. And we tend to see this quite regularly. The bond market is closed. But ETFs like JNK and AGG and other fixed income ETFs will be trading throughout the whole day. So the ETF is, is it available to be able to buy or sell based on what investors are looking to do, either to exit the portfolio. But they have to be aware of that the ETF is trading at a price that is often different than what the fair market value of those underlying securities are. ETFs yeah. have liquidity that the underlying stocks don't, but that's a great opportunity for investors to get out or get in when they want to.